Hey Facebook Live family, this is Chris calling you from the uh, mobile office, the uh, Toyota 4Runner. Excited to be with you today and uh, to be sharing some great wisdom that's about to come. Uh, I'm going to be interviewing a good friend of mine, Larry Taylor, who is a revivalist and a pastor. He's traveled all over the world uh, in missions and seen incredible miracles all over the world so I'm bringing him on in just about uh, a minute here he's uh, he's joined I'm gonna bring him on so I'm excited about that I'm learning about Facebook there's all kinds of cool things you can do with Facebook these days you can bring people on you can interview people I'm gonna show you something else fun you can do with Facebook you can do uh, this is pretty cute I, I like this one you can do this you can open your mouth and bananas can come into your mouth on Facebook that's pretty fun uh, so there's all kinds of fun things that you can do with Facebook Live, but uh, yeah, let me uh, let me just get Larry on the call here. We're gonna be asking some questions. If you have a question, you can put them down below. If you uh, have some things you want to ask from someone that's been in ministry for a really long time, who's just a real father in the faith, and who has a lot of experience literally just sharing the gospel around the world. Go ahead and join on here and you can ask some questions, share with your friends. Uh, let me let me bring him on, if I can. Video mode. There he is, Larry Taylor. I click on him. Uh, oh my gosh, it says he can't join the live video. That's that's not that's not right, Larry. I don't I don't understand why I can't join. Maybe because you're on your computer? Uh, I might need you to be on your phone. Because I can interview Ron Bailey. I'm gonna interview Ron right now. <laughs> Let's see if Ron hops on. Larry, I might need you to go on your uh, your phone for me to, to get you on here, so I'll have you do that. We're just gonna invite Ron Bailey, since he's on here for a moment, because we're live. Ron Bailey, there he is. What's up, buddy? How are you doing? Good, thank you. This is an impromptu interview with Ron Bailey. <laughs> I love this, this is awesome. Great. I don't know if anybody out yeah. there knows Ron. Ron is an incredible man of God. He loves Jesus. He loves God's presence. He's uh, recorded albums about God and his love. And uh, what's that one song that that, that you did? The uh, what's your favorite song on there, Ron? What's your favorite song that you play? Um, probably my life is filled with Jesus. That, my life is. That's the one. That's what I was thinking about. That song is yeah. epic. That song okay. is epic. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to interview Larry Taylor, and Larry uh, for some reason it wouldn't let me interview him, but it let me interview you. <laughs> it's funny because I got on here to got on there to hear this interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, where are you? Your house on the, in Graham? Yeah, I'm, in, I'm out in the country right now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, maybe I'm going to try Larry one more time, and uh, okay. I'll schedule you another time to jump on here. So we'll see if we get this to work. I hope it works. I'm looking forward to it. I love you, man. You too, buddy. Bye. All right, let's see if we can get Larry. There he is. He's coming. I got Larry Taylor. I, I would interview Ron, but he wasn't prepared for the interview. So those of you were learning how this whole thing works. So here comes Larry Taylor. Here he comes. Inviting. You could do there's all this stuff is really neat. <laughs> there he is. Hey. <laughs> hey, there you are. That's awesome. That was pretty fun. We got to impromptu uh, hang out with Ron Bailey for a moment. Right, right. Yeah. Well, hey, that's probably better anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. So stoked to be with you. Uh, we've got a few people watching, uh, people commenting, telling us where they're from. Uh, for those of you out there who don't know who Larry Taylor is, Larry Taylor is just a father in the faith. He's been an amazing uh, blessing to my life and to many other people. Uh, people look up to him for more than his hair color. They look up to him for his heart. And uh, he's a great man of God. He got into ministry. Well, you've been in ministry for what, like? 35 years somewhere less slightly less than 100 slightly less than 100 you've been in you've been preaching the gospel for a long time your history goes back you were a southern baptist pastor 
and uh, you were hungry and you went to a Rodney Howard Brown meeting and you got touched powerfully by the Holy Spirit. Why don't you tell us, tell us about what happened there? Oh, well, I got whacked. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, literally I got whacked. Uh, Rodney <clears throat> made a statement. I, I'd never been to a meeting like that at that point, you know, and he was explaining what he's going to do to everyone. Um, when he did the prayer line, he said, I'm going to go down the line here. I'm going to lay hands on some of you. Some of you I'm just going to blow on or speak to, and you're going to fall out and tell all the things that might happen, you know. And he made his statement. He said, one guy I even hit upside the head with my Bible one time. <laughs> uh, so then he starts praying for everyone, you know, and there's a lot of people in the line. and I'm about midway in the line, and I really didn't know what to do. I was just standing there kind of, uh, you know, my hands up, but really wondering what should I do <laughs> How am I standing right? You know, and that was, you know, I, I'd never been to a meeting like this. So anyway, I felt, you know, people were falling out. People were having all kinds of encounters, but all of a sudden I felt uh, Rodney standing in front of me. I had my eyes closed and I opened my eyes just in time to see his Bible hit it straight for my head. <laughs> and it, literally he wham, right upside the head. And I went out just like that. I mean, uh, and what I, my description of it is in the time it took for, from the time he hit me in the head with his Bible till I hit the floor, all of my theology went out the window. Wow. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't believe any of that could happen or that I was qualified for it or anything else. But it was real. It was permanent. You know, later I asked the Lord, I said, why? Why? Apparently I was only the second guy he'd ever hit in the head because he said, you know, one time I hit a guy in the head with the Bible. <laughs> and I, I was number two and I said what's up with that you know and I, I felt like the Holy Spirit said well you know it's because everything you've ever received in your life had to come through your head first wow and he was getting it out of the way uh, he, he disabled my radar the Lord just disabled my radar you know just microseconds long enough for me not to figure out what was happening but just get hit by the power and uh, it literally changed, you know, changed everything for me in terms of ministry and even my personal walk in my life. It was amazing. What what happened after that experience with God's power, God's presence? Well, okay, yeah, that began a process. Uh, I guess I was under the impression, you know, that <clears throat> this was mostly something that just happened to me personally, you know, because mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of changes. I mean, there were a lot of things happening that, I got the joy of the Lord, you know, I, I started getting just unbelievable flow of revelation. I mean, it was like Jesus got really, really real. Mm. I mean, people focus on the laughter and all that kind of stuff. But the thing for me that really stood out is it, it seemed like Jesus was, you know, right in my face and mm. uh, more real than anything I had ever experienced before. Uh, I didn't know it was available. <laughs> I actually thought, I thought, man, if I'd known this was available, I sure got here a lot quicker. But, <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, um, so I thought it was mainly for me because it was such a radical internal, you know, kind of transformational experience. Uh, but I was pastoring a church. So the next Sunday I go to my little church where I, in the country where I was pastoring in and uh, gave an altar call on Sunday morning. Cause that's pretty, pretty much a standard part of the lit liturgy in Baptist churches. You got to have an altar call on Sunday morning. So uh, uh, we call it the invitation actually. So I gave that, call for anybody and there was this one particular lady who came quite often probably you know almost every sunday and she came forward and i reached out to grab her hands just to pray for her and when i did it was literally like electricity shot through my hands and hit hers um i you know i haven't had that experience very often but that day i did it just like literally like electricity and <laughs> she started falling you know um and the problem was we didn't have any catchers. You know, no one had ever fallen in that church, um, at least not <laughs> when I was there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know who was more shocked, you know, her or me. And um, her eyes were about, you know, that big around on the way to the floor. And all I could think of is, wow, that's going to hurt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, she, she just before she got to the floor, it was really amazing. Just before she got to the floor, it was like, her, her dress inflated like a parachute and she just kind of floated to the floor. Wow. And, you know, was, was not injured at all, thankfully. Uh, but in that <laughs> moment I realized, Hey, you know, 
this wasn't just for me. This is something that was imparted that I can transfer to other people too. And Chris, I think that was the moment when I realized that this for me was the, you know, like the pearl of great price. Um, that mm. I would serve, you know, it's what I've been praying for and wanting my whole life as an adult in ministry. Uh, but didn't realize, you know, exactly all that meant. And uh, when it came, I said, whatever it takes to walk in this, to grow in this, to continue in it, I'm going to do it because this is what I've been praying for. That's amazing. So that's like, you know, the week right after you get impacted in a meeting with Rodney Howard Brown, you just experience God's presence. He hits you on the head with his Bible, which he'd only done one other time before to somebody. And uh, you experience God's presence in a powerful way is what you were longing for. And then all of a sudden you see just manifestations of God's presence flowing through you and uh, through your love for people and just, just wanting to serve people. So where did that take you? Like, take me through the next, you know, a couple of years. What happened? Well, the only way I can describe it is, you know, it's just a radical reorientation for me. It was almost like starting over um, mm. in ministry. Um, several things happened during that season, uh, but, but one of the things I realized uh, as the Holy Spirit began to speak to me was that he really had called me to a different type of ministry than, than what I was doing. You know, wow. I was pastoring a local church and um, doing the best I knew how. People were very kind and allowed me to stay, but, you know, <laughs> it was just not a, a real good fit for me. And um, almost immediately I realized I was supposed to be a revivalist. That was really what God had intended all along. And so um, within a year, uh, that happened in 1993. And, uh, in 1994, we resigned the church and started traveling full-time in itinerant ministry. So, it was, you know, it was a really big shift for me. But all of that came out of the inner working. I mean, that's the, you know, the history of it. But the revelation that came as a result of that fountain that was released in revival, you know, that encounter with the Holy Spirit, uh, it just transformed practically everything I understood about how you do ministry. Mm. That's awesome. So you guys started traveling and I know there's probably some people watching that. Uh, I know, I know for a fact that people are watching now and probably will later that, that in some ways maybe feel called to, uh, you know, evangelistic ministry or feel called to you know, public speaking about Jesus in different environments or, you know, serving the church or helping release communities of people into a greater sense of God's presence, greater sense of manifestations of God's spirit. Um, what happened for you? Like, so you're, you guys resigned the church and then just like all of a sudden you had invitations come or like what, what happened? <laughs> uh, <laughs> these are great questions, questions, Chris. I, you know, I, I've got stories, man, you know, and sometimes with old guys, all we do is tell old stories, you know, <laughs> so, so, some of these things were really dramatic. And I mean, uh, I can't, exaggerate how unusual and how significant they were but you've asked me a question that really is uh, uh, one of the most moving and powerful things that happened to me because when we left the church we were pastoring at the time I didn't have any invitations <laughs> I didn't have anything on my calendar we had very little money um, we had our personal belongings in a U-Haul trailer and we knew where we were going to be moving um, but it, it's a pretty dramatic story. I don't know if you want to go into all of it or not, because I don't know how, how interested people would be, but I'll just say it was miraculous all the way through. When people ask me, how do you get an itinerant ministry? First of all, I say, don't. <laughs> uh, if you can do anything else, do it. Because unless God's hand is in it, unless it's, you know, unless you're following the leadership of the Holy Spirit, uh, there's not a plan. There's not a, you know, a procedural manual, manual or, you know, here's the steps to get an itinerant ministry. It, it doesn't work that way, or at least it didn't work that way for me. Um, so actually through renting my home, the place we moved, I met a man uh, that, that owned the home in my hometown. And uh, I'd never met him before, but he rented this house to us and uh, we moved in. I think I've told you this story probably, you might remember it, but uh, on Christmas Eve, he shows up at my front door with a list of names. And he said, I've been praying with some men in Kirbyville, Texas for revival. Uh, and they, they meet every Wednesday morning 
and they have for several years, and they're praying for revival in their city. He said, I think I'm supposed to introduce you to those guys. Wow. And uh, I said, well, that's great. You know, I mean, I was really praying about where to go and, you know, what doors might open because none were at that time. And uh, uh, so he, he left. It was Christmas Eve. I, a friend of mine called me the next day. Did you hear? He said, did you hear about your uh, um, landlord? And I said, no. Well, why, what's going on? He said, he, he, he passed away last night. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I mean, two things just hit me immediately. Number one, I, th I thought, well, that, there that goes, you know. I mean, I thought I had one shot and he passed away. But I didn't say this, but when he, when he left my house, he left that list of names with me. He just mm -hmm. handed it to me and said, here, you know, we'll get together next week and I'll take you down there and I'll introduce you to all these men. Uh, and so I, this is really what was in my heart. I really was moved for a lot of reasons, but I realized that was the last thing he did before he passed away. Uh Wow. And I thought if, if it was that important that that was the last thing that man did, I'm going to follow up on it, you know, and in yeah. the way that itinerants and evangelists work, that's kind of not kosher, you know, to go approach pastors and say, hey, I want to come to a meeting, you know, that's just really not the way it works. So I was, you know, I'm hesitant to do that, but I knew that God said, go see these guys. So uh, the first guy on the list, first name on the list was a, a respected pastor in the community, knocked on his door. <laughs> Well, I told him that story I just told you, and then the Lord gave me a prophetic word for him. Is out of, out of Isaiah? I just read it to him. He said, "Would you come in my come in my house?" And after that, you know, he he invited me to the prayer meeting, introduced me to all those same men, uh, just you know, gave me a really warm welcome. And for the next several years, almost all the meetings I did came out of that group of pastors in that in that prayer group, and that opened doors, you know in lots of other places once revival started happening in those churches. So, I mean, that's how I got started. I mean, that's my story. <laughs> um, can't really reproduce stuff like that without the work of the Holy Spirit involved. It's a really good word. So when you say like revival happened in these churches, what did that, what does that mean? What does that mean? Maybe, maybe somebody's watching that doesn't, they maybe they don't understand like that term or, or what does that mean? Like revival happened in these churches? Well, from the spiritual side, what it means is I believe the Holy Spirit was poured out in a fresh release and people mm -hmm. were transformed by his presence. So the churches that were marginal or, you know, even dead, some of them were just reignited with life. Um, people were getting saved. People were getting healed. Uh, spontaneous deliverances, you know, the uh, people were coming from a pretty wide geographical area. Denominational walls were breaking down. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it was just... Uh, a move of the Holy Spirit. Um, on the practical side, what it meant was we had meetings sometimes that would go on for months. You know, they start out as a um, not not necessarily a scheduled meeting. Let's do Sunday and see what happens. But you know, that was happening a lot in those days. This was this was the early '90s. Toronto uh, Rodney's meetings were often extended. Actually, almost all of them were extended meetings. Uh, that, that year, Toronto broke out, and so a lot of other uh, places. You know. Uh, we're seeing this, you know, thing of that where spontaneously when the spirit moved, people would just start having meetings and, and they were just, you know, like glory. <laughs> mm, so uh, that's, that's what I mean when I say revival. Now, some people talk about a scheduled meeting on the calendar and once a year we do this thing and all that. But for me, revival is a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit. Mm. It brings transformation, power, you know, just like the book of Acts, Acts chapter two. It's beautiful. So I, I, it's like I, I want to ask more story questions. Um, <laughs> I want to hear about, I remember you did these meetings in Grayford, Texas, that went on for a long time. And uh, there was some signs and wonders that were happening in these meetings that were kind of unusual, that were, that mm. were marked. Um, you know, maybe you're watching, you don't know what a sign and wonder is. Well, a sign points to something or, or says someone's this direction or you go this direction to find this. And a wonder makes you wonder. There was these, uh, I remember we talked about uh, gold teeth were appearing in people's mouth. And you guys were, you guys were, were getting like recording that and keeping track of that. And then uh, the national, um, what is it, the Associated Press picked up on the story. And so as a result, you had interview, you know, radio interview with, you know, someone across the nation. And uh, tell me, tell me something about that time, because that was a, that was a beautiful time. 
Yeah, that, that happened uh, in 1999. Uh, actually, it was Weatherford, Texas. Uh, Grayford okay. was, the, was the church that I pastored. We're getting into all, oh. the, all the details here that really don't matter to other people. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, Weatherford was the uh, city where that happened, what you're describing. That was in 1999. Um, you know, we had, we had uh, a lot of extended meetings. We saw God doing lots of personal stuff and unusual manifestations for, you know, from 93 on. But I started hearing about, uh, you know, this thing with gold teeth and glory dust, gold dust appearing on people. Uh, I started hearing about that in 1999. And so I said, Lord, if it's real and it's you, I want to see that happen. And I started mm -hmm. manifesting in, in our meetings. Um, and um, that led to the meeting, actually, uh, that opened the door for us to do some meetings in Weatherford where, um, yeah, for we were there for about four months, I think, nightly meetings. And within the first three weeks, there were over 90 people that testified they had gold teeth uh, where they had not had them before, you know, multiple, in many cases, multiple gold teeth. Um, wow. Yeah, and then, you know, what I call glory dust now, but the, you know, gold glitter or multicolored glitter would just be showing up on people. But really the te the gold teeth was something that <laughs> um, was was really unique, not unique, but but really stand out in those meetings. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's some really funny stories about that, but <laughs> like I said, I got a lot of stories. But yeah, then what happened, um, somewhere towards the end, the Fort Worth newspaper, which is called the Star, Fort Worth Star Telegram, sent out a reporting team, and it was a, a Jewish guy and his photographer, and they had just finished a story on the Wiccans at Fort Hood. <laughs> she talking about extremes. He went from the Wiccans in Fort Hood to, to us. Um, but <laughs> I don't know if anybody's following this, Chris. This sounds like made-up stuff. But awesome. Um, <laughs> Uh, we were having these amazing meetings and word got out, you know, just started spreading. People were telling other people, you know, and so it, somehow somebody on the news desk at, at the newspaper got word of it. And so they sent the reporting team out and uh, the, the guy, you know, the reporter did a really good job, uh, especially the photographer. She got saved, actually, I think, or at least she was touched. Wow. And, um, and so she got some really good pictures of people showing their gold teeth. Um, and... Um, that story, when he ran that story, it was, it ran on the, uh, you know, the life section on New Year's Day on the front page mm -hmm. of the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. And then the wire services picked it up and it was in newspapers, you know, all over the United States, which led to some radio interviews, uh, you know, live radio, that was fun, live radio interviews. Uh, we did several of those, Pastor and I, um, you know, just talking about what Jesus was doing. And a lot of people were calling to make fun of it or, you know, they thought they were skeptical, but we just got to share Jesus with them. It was, it was really cool. Uh, and then probably the most uh, significant thing like that was um, somebody on the news desk at the CBS affiliate in Fort Worth, uh, Dallas, uh, Channel 11, um, heard about it. So they sent uh, a live news crew out. Uh, <laughs> First, they did interviews with all of us, and then they did a live feed from the parking lot during the 10 o'clock newscast. They did a live feed interviewing people coming out of the meetings. Um, so, I mean, you know, people prophesy that there's going to be a day when, um, uh, you know, signs, wonders, and miracles, Jesus is going to be front page news. Well, he already has been. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. it's, it's, it does happen. It's not like it's without precedent. It happened to the guys in the Latter Rain movement. It happened to people, you know, Billy Graham. It, throughout history, there have been times when God moved in and he takes over the publicity. <laughs> One thing we did, we never even bought an ad. It was a spontaneous meeting. Started mm -hmm. on a Sunday. The pastor said, let's see what happens. And on Monday, he said, let's do it again. And Tuesday and first week, we went every night deciding, you know, we're going to go another night. Uh, so that wasn't planned. And you can't buy that. You know, it's just what something God does. But it was exciting. We had a lot of. A lot of amazing things happen in those meetings in Weatherford. That's amazing. I love what you said at, kind of at the beginning of the story with the signs and wonders. I mean, maybe maybe somebody's watching and you're like, that just seems weird to me, like gold teeth. But you see the fruit of it in the fact that, one, more people started coming. Two, yeah. before you know it, you're talking about Jesus on the radio stations in different places around the country. I'm like, that's 
that right there is the fruit of it. I think you can test a, a true sign and a wonder by what it does, the fruit of it. I'm like, well, are people getting healed? Are people getting saved? Are people, you know, coming back into community, coming mm -hmm. back into like, that, that's pretty amazing. But I, I love what you said. You said, God, if that's you and it's real, then please do it with me. Mm, yeah. I thought that was, that's just a beautiful prayer. It was just real simple. Like, if that's real, mm. do it with me. Um, yeah. I want to encourage you if you're watching this, 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 uh, you know, Facebook live interview, just ask God if it's real, do it with you. You know, uh, he'll do that. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to let yeah. you pray for people for a second, Larry. We'll, we'll keep interviewing, but if you have anything you want to pray or just speak, well, he, people, he'll do it while people are just listening. That gold teeth thing, you can't make it happen. It just happens, <laughs> you know, and you know, somebody, some of y'all that are watching might listening that might check, you know, in a few minutes and who knows what might be happening there. But I, I got to say two things about signs and wonders, Chris, first of all, and I, I want to be real clear about it because there's so much confusion and so much misinformation. Mm -hmm. The purpose of signs and wonders is to point people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the example that I've always used and, and where it gets weird and where it gets, you know, uh, where people misuse it and abuse it and all that is, is when they, it becomes about anything other than Jesus. Uh, the biggest, one of the major signs in the Bible was the star of David. And that's my, my best example of, that was a sign in the sky. God, what was it for? It was to get them to Jesus. It was to get the Magi to Jesus. And once they got there, that purpose of that sign was fulfilled, you know. So we don't have Church of the Star, but we have Church of Jesus, you know. <laughs> so we don't foc I don't focus on the signs and wonders. I welcome them. You know, I celebrate them because it's something God's doing. But I pay attention to what they're pointing to. They're pointing to mm -hmm. Jesus because he wants us to have an encounter, you know. So that's that's first thing. But yeah, I, I was real simple about it. I, I wasn't sure. I mean, I'm I'm kind of a normal guy, you know, semi. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I got a phone call on my phone. I don't know how you're supposed to do all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> uh, I discovered my my computer doesn't have Chrome on it, so you can't do live without Chrome. But it works on my phone. So okay. anyway. Um, yeah, when, when I first started hearing about the gold, it was some, for some reputable people who I actually, you know, really respected. And so I didn't doubt that it was happening, but I, I still thought, man, this is, well, here's what I really thought. I thought, I already don't, ha I've already lost most of the friends I have. And if I start <laughs> talking about this stuff, I'm going to lose the rest of them, you know. <laughs> so it was a sincere prayer. So, Lord, if this is you and it's real, you know, if it's real and it's you, let me know. But also, let me know what it means. Because I feel mm. like signs and wonders usually have a prophetic meaning attached to them if we will ask, you know, if we'll seek that. So the Lord took me to the book of Haggai to answer the question. And the Haggai, he says, the, you know, the silver and gold are mine, saith the Lord. And I know that sounds like a simple, simple, but it is simple sometimes, you know. It, he said, it's mine. I said, okay, it's yours. And then mm. what does it mean? Well, if you read the rest of Haggai in context, it was about God saying there's going to be a latter house, his temple. Wow. And he's going to fill that temple with his glory. And uh, so I just began to understand that that sign was really pointing to what was happening as God was reviving the church and filling his people, this temple, with his glory. And the Bible even says that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is going to fill the earth. So I think it's a revival move of his spirit that's only really just begun, but its culmination is going to be a worldwide revelation of his glory wow. in the people of God. What, is, what does that word mean to you, Pastor Larry? What, is, what does the word glory mean to you? You keep asking these questions, Chris. These are, these are loaded questions, I know, aren't they? Uh, well, okay. Um, the theological definition I got when I was uh, an undergraduate working on my Bible degree was the glory of God is everything he is and everything he does. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I, that was the simple, you know, descriptive way. Some of the professors explained it, but it's his majesty, his presence, his creation, his glory is revealed in so many different ways, you know, but it really is like the, the, the totality of who God is and what he does. But that sounded pretty high to me. I didn't have really a handle for that uh, because I kept going to meetings like in Rodney's meetings, they would refer to some of the manifestations. They would say, well, the glory of God is here. Well, from my background, I thought glory just meant you're going to die and go to heaven someday. I didn't know. You know, I, I didn't have a grid for glory here and now, you know. 
so as I began to, you know, kind of explore it and have more experiences and, and look at the Bible, I realized that, yes, there is an ultimate revelation of his glory, but there's a glory here and now. Um, and, and in Paul described in Corinthians, he said the Holy Spirit reveals the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And the result of that is transformation. Wow. Uh, he even referred to it as the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ in the, in the New King James translation. That's what he called it, the gospel of the glory of Jesus Christ. Wow. So when people encountered Jesus, they were encountering the manifested glory of God on earth. And God's intention is to, I believe, pour out that manifested glory in us so that we're manifesting what Jesus did, which is the glory of the Father. Wow. Thank you, God. What would you say, just in understanding God's personhood, his presence, his glory, just experiencing these things, experiencing so much, you know, you, you could look back and say, wow, God's been faithful in my life for you know, your whole life, obviously, but through 30 plus years of ministry, what would you say are things that touch you deeply today? Like what, what do you think about today that keeps, keeps you focused on, on his presence, keeps you focused on his love and keeps you focused on his purposes. What keeps me focused on it? Well, I am a student of scripture. I read, you know, the Bible every day habitually, but also <laughs> for life. You know I mean? That's just what mm -hmm. I do. And you can't read a page of the new Testament that takes you anywhere other than the presence of Jesus. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the manifest, what we call the manifested presence, just the reality of Jesus is, is, on every page, you know, that's what scripture is leading us to. So if you're talking about what do I focus on to keep me <laughs> focused, it's, I think, you know, that's part of it. Part of it's just the hunger that I have that I, you know, having tasted and seen that the Lord is good, I can't live without that. It, wow. it's, it's like, that is my life. That, that what gives, that's what animates me. That was, that's what makes me get up in the morning. That's what encourages me. That's what gives meaning and identity to who I am is that, mm. you know, and so it's not like I'm trying to artificially make Jesus come. I can't live without him. I, I, uh, my life doesn't make sense without his presence. Hmm. Life doesn't make sense without his presence. That's a, that's a deep word. Larry, I was going to ask you some other stuff, but I don't even know if I can go there. I just feel God's presence just mm. in the midst of this, uh, this conversation. Oh, Lord. I was going to ask Larry some other questions. Uh, maybe we'll do it in another time. I was going to ask him some questions. Larry carries a lot of revelation around uh, just just kingdom finance and just just you know sowing seed and stuff. But uh, I want to kind of just want to pray for people maybe that are watching, Larry. Maybe if you have any words for people or just anything else that you want to share, um, it's on your heart. I I just feel I feel God's presence. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want to. Do, I don't, somewhere else right now. <laughs> yeah well I, I, I love I, I will pray right now I, I want to pray for for folks I there's a there's a thing that the Lord led me to years ago and I think probably I got it from maybe John Arnott in Toronto I don't know where where I first heard it but it's just a simple prayer uh, but every time I've ever prayed that prayer something's happened for somebody you know and uh, first, I just want to pray that, that, Lord, let your glory come, you know, mm -hmm. fill this temple with your glory. Lord, right now, I'm just asking you for every person that's living, listening or watching that uh, you would fill your temple. Fill us, Lord. We are your temple. Say that with me. I am your temple. <laughs> I am your Lord, temple. I am your temple. And Lord, fill your temple with your glory mm -hmm. right now, right now. Lord, let your glory come. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I just encourage you to receive. You don't have to do anything, think anything, work anything up. Just receive what He's pouring out on you right now. Just let His glory fill His temple. That's you. Mm. Fill. Oh. <laughs> 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 Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Father. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm sorry.
Uh, in his presence, all kinds of things happen. When mm. God's glory shows up, the Bible says that in his presence, there's fullness of joy. People get happy. Mm. Uh, when uh, Isaiah saw the presence, when he entered in the, the inner court, he said, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips, mm. and I dwell amongst the people. of un Jesus got so real for him that day that he just realized he didn't belong there. But the angel took the coal off the altar and literally purified his lips. And God takes the blood of Jesus and applies it to you right now. And you may not feel worthy to receive his glory. You may not feel like you measure up. But God has made you worthy by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So accept it as the free gift and the amazing gift that it is. It's just what he wants to bestow on you because of who he is, not because of who you are. Just receive and receive it. Thank you, mm -hmm. Lord. Some of you are getting healed. When, when, when Jesus showed up, the Bible says that everywhere Jesus went, he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. Mm. You know, the presence of God is not something, you know, we, we use that if, as if it's a separate thing. We're talking about Jesus showing up, the Holy Spirit making Jesus real. And when that happens, you get healed. If somebody's getting healed right now. I don't know who it is. Cause I really, I don't have the whole list of people that are watching. Um, but if I was more prophetic, I guess I'd get the name or their address, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you live somewhere and something's happening in your life right now. You're being healed. <laughs> I, that much I know. Somebody's getting healed right now. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, type it in if you are. If you're getting healed, type it in so we can know about it. Yeah, tell us. Tell us what's happening in your body out there. Just just <laughs> test, your, test your body. Move it around. Um, I love that. I love the presence of God. He is the healer. And where his presence is present, healing can't help but happen. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, check it out. Check out your hands, too. You, some of you might have glory dust on them. If you've never experienced that before, that's really cool. I know lots of people have. It's, it's gotten fairly common, I guess, in some places. Uh, but if you've never seen that before, and you, you know, just take a look. Look on your hand or on your Bible. Maybe oil. I mean, sometimes oil shows up. <laughs> feathers, that's the fun one, feathers. I got feather stories. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this. I love this. For those of you that are just joining, too, um, <laughs> sharing about encounters with God's presence, just some of the things that happen around God's presence, signs and wonders, things that signs that make you wonder, things, supernatural things, and you know, um, if healing is a sign and a wonder. Um, there's all kinds of things. I, I don't have to talk about it. You know, winds can blow in, in still rooms and hold up <laughs> on people and gold teeth. And uh, someone watching, you've got a problem with your left ear. And uh, I want you to do me a favor right now. Uh, we just watched a little a sweet girl at our church a couple weeks ago. She was born with a hearing impairment, and uh, her ear opened up in service. She was born with it. Um, her ear opened up. She could hear whispers in that ear where she couldn't hear them before, and she was just crying. But there's someone watching you, probably with your left ear. Just uh, put your finger in your left ear for a second, and I just want you to make uh, this sound. I want you to pop, just <laughs> pop in Jesus' name, and take your finger out, and uh, and just. Check with your ear right mm. now. Lord mm. just opened your ear. Just yeah. right down at the bottom here uh, what the Lord's done for you because he just opened mm. up your ear problem. Uh, it's awesome. Larry, I... Uh, yeah, I got a word for somebody yeah. um, that's going to be watching this recorded later. I just got a real strong impression that there's someone that's really going to have a significant healing. But you're wondering if it can happen because you're not watching live. And I'm just wanting you to know right now, yes, you heard the Holy Spirit correctly. You're to be healed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, when Larry was saying that too, for some reason I saw um, a spine, but it wasn't just a spine. I saw like metal along the spine, like um, like pins and, and metal. And uh, you know, Jesus makes that stuff disappear in Jesus' name. Uh, we just command all that stuff to go. Uh, we just command full mobility to come into your back. I want you to check your back right now. Just start to move around. Just start to do what you can't normally do, and you'll find yourself healed. Oh, my goodness. This is amazing, Larry. <laughs> I think we should just keep ministering for, like, another couple minutes. I, I don't need to do yeah. Yeah. I feel like we're, <laughs> we're, we're swimming in the, in the pool right now. I want to – another time in the future, I'm going to interview Larry again, you guys. Uh, I, if you enjoyed him, thumbs up, share with people, write a comment. <laughs> Um, I know you, I know you do cause we've got a bunch of people watching, but, uh, I want to, I want to hear more from him, but do you have anything else too, just ministry wise? I just, well, just I'm just encouraging right now. I, I, we talk about the, you know, the things like the gold and unusual signs, but 
one of the, to me, one of the most uh, awesome mm -hmm. things that happened uh, in meeting settings were, were so many people getting healed, you know, because Jesus, that was a primary focus in Jesus' ministry. But we weren't really praying for people to get healed. They just got healed, you know, mm -hmm. like in prayer lines and stuff. And, um, you know, just thinking about that meeting, uh, one of those meetings where um, <laughs> I was just going down the line praying for people, you know, and this one pastor was standing in line next to another pastor's wife. And the wife just started shaking uncontrollably. The woman did. And then, um, so I got to the next pastor, the next man who was a pastor. And I said, I was just making a joke. I said, Hey, a whole lot of shaking is going on. And he said, yeah, but it's the wrong person shaking. And he turned around and raised his hands. And this was a man who had had Parkinson's since, since birth. I mean, not Parkinson's, but, um, you know, he shook, um, I forgot what the disease was called, but he, he shook uncontrollably and everybody in town knew him. He was in his sixties, you know, he'd, he'd grown up in that community. And for those folks for that, in that room that night saw his hands not shaking for the first time in his life. Wow. And that was a testimony and a witness to everybody in that community of the healing power of Jesus. And, and we had another guy come in in that same meeting, it was in a wheelchair, and I never prayed for anybody in a wheelchair at that point. So I was a little intimidated, you know, like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> but uh, when it came time, when he was he was in the line, you know, and I, when I got to him, the Holy Spirit said, just go lay your hand on him and say what I tell you to say. Mm. So I walked over, and, and, and I just said what I heard. It came out of my mouth. First time I'd ever heard it, it came out of my mouth. I said, you don't need to have any more faith. You've got all the faith you need to be healed. You just need to get rid of your unbelief right now. And wow. then I touched him. And when I touched him again, it was one of those electricity type experiences. And, um, uh, I didn't know what to do. Cause I, you know, I mean, I didn't know whether to grab him out of the wheelchair or what, you know, I'm watching me in. But <laughs> so I said, well, do something you couldn't do before. And I hadn't noticed it, but his feet were just moving back and forth really rapidly. And he looked up at me really like I was kind of crazy. He said, I already am doing something I couldn't do before. He said, I was paralyzed from the waist down. And for, I think it was seven years, I hadn't been able to move anything below the waist, no feeling. And he said, my feet, feet are moving and I'm getting feeling back in my legs. Wow. And, and, and somebody had bought him, it's really funny, somebody had bought him a pair of Nike titty shoes. And he said, somebody get these shoes off of me. They were too little. They're about two sizes too little. But he didn't know it until he got healed because he had never been able to feel his feet. Um, anyway, that, that was funny to me, but they, uh, you know, within, within, I'd say 20 minutes, he was walking on his own around, you know, the whole I'm uh, auditorium area. So, I mean, I get excited when I see signs and wonders come, not because of the signs and wonders, but what it leads to. I mean, when God releases his glory and his miracle working power, people get their needs to get met. I mean, uh, relationships get healed, broken hearts get healed. Mm. salvation happens, deliverance happens, and, and people get physically healed. So to me, it's like, why would we be afraid of a few unusual things if that's the way God introduces the big things that he wants to do? That's so good. I, I love what you said too, Larry, when that guy, you, you went to him and you didn't know what you were going to say to him, the, the man in the wheelchair. And yeah. then these birds kind of came out of your spirit. Where, where did they come from? Like, just... When God talks to you like that, where does that come from? Ah, uh, well, I don't, I don't explain it. It comes by revelation through the Holy Spirit. But it wasn't anything I was thinking about. I didn't even think that. I was I was thinking about, this is going to be really embarrassing when that guy doesn't get up out of the wheelchair. You know? <laughs> so it wasn't coming from here? No, it wasn't coming from my mind at all. No, no. Mm. I, I never thought that. I never really had that conceptualized that thought before. And it, it, came, it became kind of a part of my theology after that. You know, a whole lot of what I've learned about theology that I, I thought I knew from my education, I've had to relearn about what God really says about stuff and what he really thinks about it. You know, like how he moves and why he moves and who he'll move through. I yeah. thought I had all that figured out until it happened. And then once it happened, I realized none of the criteria that I was going by really were relevant because God's mm -hmm. got his own way of doing things. And if we want to see God move, we just need to line up with that. Let him do it his way. So, but, yeah. You know, I, and too, you said how um, the guy's in the wheelchair and the words came out of you of, you don't need more faith. You have enough faith. 
You just need to get rid of the unbelief. I think that's something for, for all of us to kind of, you know, take into, take into our hearts, even as you're, you're watching. Um, I love you, uncle Freddie, my uncle Freddie's <laughs> watching. Cool. That word. I, I didn't, uncle Freddie, I didn't know that you had, did you have some type of back surgery? Cause I didn't know that I had a, uh, like a vision from God about like a cage around a back, like metal and pins in a back. And that's why I said it earlier. And if that's for you, I, which I believe it is because I wouldn't have said it and you, you're on here watching. I don't know any of this about you. I didn't pay you money to get on here or anything like that. I don't, like God wants to heal you right now, Uncle Freddy. So I command that affliction to leave your back. I command the rod, the metal to melt out, to be flexible and that the love of God would touch you even right now in Jesus name, Uncle Freddy. I bless you. I bless you. Just, just let me know what's going on because here's the thing. I love what Larry's saying. You know, we, sometimes we feel like, Oh, I wish we just had more faith. I wish we could believe like that. You hear these stories. You're like, man, Larry can pray for a wheelchair and he gets it. But Larry just told you in his mind, he, he was like, I, this is going to be embarrassing. It's not a question of, do we have enough faith? It's a question of, are we willing to lay down our skepticism? Are we willing to lay down our doubts? I, I love Ryan Harbonke. He says, we have to learn how to doubt our doubts. Like yeah. somebody, yeah. they say, do you have doubts? He says, I have learned, I have doubts and I doubt my doubts. I think there's something about us like laying down our doubts, laying down our unbelief because really unbelief is, is placing faith in something negative that we can't really know anyway. Mm, when mm. Said we place our faith in what God says and who God is. So uh, I just want to encourage you out there. If you're watching, maybe you're like listening to stories and stuff. You're like, this is crazy. This is weird. Or mm -hmm. I wish I could believe like that. Maybe you're in one of those places. I encourage you just to lay down, mm -hmm. you know, skepticism, lay down your unbelief and just say, God, if this is legit, if this is real, I want to experience you like this. Yeah. Um, the testimony on Sunday of a, a girl that came to, came to church and she was so transparent. I, I love, I, I love how transparent people can be and how authentic people can be. She got up and she says, I'm a skeptic, but I'm due for surgery tomorrow on my jaw and my jaw hurts all the time. I have this horrible pain in my jaw and my jaw does not hurt now. And she's like touching her jaw. And she said, again, I'm still a skeptic, but yeah. I love being authentic with her experience. But the reality is when God does miracles or when you hear stories of miracles, we get to choose. We're like, we don't have to be skeptical anymore. None of us do. And, um, you know, I honor that girl. She might be watching. So I bless you. Like, God's got you. Um, so I encourage those of you out there, like, God wants to impart faith. Um, you know, he is, he is the gift and he is the faith. And uh, he has come to us. So, Larry, do you have anything else to add? And we're going to might, might close up here. Cause, uh, well, I think you've hit on a really key point. And I don't want to take just a couple of seconds to say it. But you can't. Uh, formulas is not what makes it happen. And, mm. you know, there's revelation about faith, but then people try to make that into formulas. And it's just simple childlike faith. It's okay, I believe that. I may not understand it. I got a lot of issues, God. I don't understand it. I believe, help out my unbelief. And God will do things sometimes that even when we don't have faith, He's just so good that sometimes He even overrides our unbelief. So you really can't apply a formula to every situation. But by, you know, uh, the principle is true that if you align your, your your mind and your heart and your speech with what God's saying, you're going to see things happen. And if you if you just have simple childlike faith, not not faith that's like a work that you got to work it up or go through ten steps to get there or figure it out, but just like you know, your mom says, "Hey, I'm going to give you an ice cream cone." You say, "Okay, I'll take it." Uh, you know, that's simple childlike faith. And all the unbelief stuff, all, all that is the junk we've accumulated over years that just says God can't be that good. It can't be that good for me. Uh, but, yes, it can be. That's, that's exactly why the gospel is called the good news. It's better than you thought it was. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Well, Larry, I, I thank yeah. you for your time. I thank you for being on here. I thank you for imparting hey. love. Um, those of you, what, what's your website again? It's go in, go in men. Uh, my, my, yeah, my website is goinministries.com. It's all go, one word, go, G-O-I-N, ministries.com. Go and, in. uh, 
pastor there at Oasis of Grace in Graham, Texas, which is a great church if you're anywhere in the area. Graham, look it up. But uh, Larry, thank you so much for for joining us, for imparting life. Uh, I know people on here that are my age that are going to be really impacted through this this message, this ministry. Um, you've taught me so much. I, I could sit here and interview you for like another two hours, but I want to. Uh, so we'll do this again, you guys. Okay. Hey, Uncle Stuart, it was good to join. Thanks for joining the, the cast. If you know somebody that needs a miracle or uh, or just needs something, Uncle Freddie, I love you. We're going to get to <laughs> find out here. This is crazy. I just think that's crazy. I have that, that age around the spine. It's not even, I mean, there's there's like 15 or 20 yeah. people watching, like my uncle. So God, I just thank you. <laughs> uncle Freddie, you're touching him right now. So anyway, any of you guys out there, we love you. We bless you. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Chris, Bye, thank you for your ministry, man. Thank you for what you've done in our fellowship and the power and the love that you carry. Uh, man, there's, there's, you're, you're carrying everything I'm talking about. So I feel like I'm speaking to an echo chamber almost, but uh, I just am honored that you had me on today and I appreciate you and love you a lot, brother. God bless you. I love you too. We'll see you guys soon. Bye, Larry. Love you. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye.